In today's video, I'm going to introduce you and show you how to use the tree fill filter to create your own unique tree and place it in your image. Hello and welcome back everybody. For this tutorial here, I'm cutting it up into two parts. The first part that I'll be doing right now is giving you the general tour of the tree fill tool and letting you see some of the specifics on how to use it and tweak it to make yourself a unique tree. And also showing you some of the great advantages and also the shortcomings and disadvantages of the trees that you would be creating. In part two, I'll be moving into creating a tree and putting it in a background image and helping make it look a bit more realistic for the image that I set it in. If you want to skip this part and move along to part two, you maybe already know some of the specifics, you can go ahead and just click on the image to the side here and it'll bring you to part two of the video. Or if you don't know much or anything about this tool, just sit back, relax, and hopefully you can enjoy and learn a little bit more about the tree fill filter. First thing one might need to know here is that ever since Photoshop came out with CC 2014, you would be finding your tree filter here, down through the filter menu, through render, and right here. Before 2014, when it was just Photoshop CC, you would find it from the fill over here down by the edit menu. You would go to fill, and under content, you would find uh, pattern, and then find your scripted patterns through there, find your tree. But it's no longer in the current version of Photoshop. Like I said, you'll find it here through the filter, render, tree. And we're going to create a new layer here above the plain white background. And as you create a tree, you don't need to fill your area with a gray or any color or anything for that matter. You just can uh, render your tree onto a blank layer. And that's what we're going to do here. Go to the filter menu, through render, down to tree. And as it opens up, you'll see that the tree on the screen will be the last one that you would use when using this tool. last one I did was this ficus, but I'm going to switch to the default, which brings us to an oak tree. And once you've got this default tree open to you, you notice some of the settings down the side here you can play with. The light direction, you see that the tab is all the way over to the left, and some of the lighter leaves are on the left side of the tree. You'll be able to play with this tab, and as you drag it over to the other side, you're changing the direction of light on this tree. Everywhere that you move the tab to, you'll find that you get the lighter leaves on that side. It helps simulate sunlight or artificial light, whatever would help it fit in better with your images. You can also change the amount of leaves on the tree. You can zap that all the way down to zero to strip that tree bare, giggity, or bring it all the way up to 100 to fill that tree out. And you could also change the size of the leaves. If you drag this all the way down to zero, the leaves are incredibly small, almost uh, unable to be seen on this little thumbnail here. And also, once again, you could drag this all the way up to 200 and really tailor the leaves to the way you might need them. Next one down here is the branch's height. Now we can lower that as far down as 70, which doesn't show much of a difference there between 70 and 100. But if I were to take this all the way up to 300, you'll find that where the branches start is a lot higher on the tree and you can specify how low or how high you want your branches to start for any kind of unique tree you want to create. You can also play with the branches thickness. It's not just the branches, it also includes the trunk of the tree. If you take that all the way down to zero, basically you've gotten them thin enough to not exist. If you want to just play with the leaves, uh, either create shrubbery or if you have a tree in your image that needs more leaves you can get rid of the branches from this this tree tool here and just use the leaves to impose them over your real tree if you need to fill it out some 
or you can take that all the way up for a much thicker tree trunk and branches. Now each tree has its default leaf, like this oak tree would have the leaves that would be fitting of an oak tree. You can deselect that and then choose from this list of 16 different leaf types from the other trees that are available to you. If you want to mix and match and create your own specific type of tree, but we're going to go back to the default leaves here. And under Randomize Shapes, if you click that, what it's going to do is enable the program that Photoshop is using, the algorithm, to figure out where the, the branches and the leaves are. It will change that randomly anytime you make a change to these, to these tabs up here. So if I just want to change the light direction a little bit, it'll also change the algorithm and the location and specifics of the branches and the leaves. But if I don't want to do that with every change I make, I could then leave all my settings the same and play with the arrangement down at the bottom. You can either type in the number between 1 and 100, or you can play with the tab here and slide that back and forth. And each time you make that change, it's coming up with a completely different arrangement. So every time you create a tree, you can create a brand new unique tree every time. Now let's go into the advanced tab here. Let me show you a few things. At the top here you'll see camera tilt. As you move this from left to right, I'll bring it all the way over to the right to show you the extreme, which isn't all that extreme really. The base will be back a little bit and the top of the tree will be tilted forward towards you. As, as though you were slightly higher than the tree, you're you would be photographing it from a slightly downward angle. That's what the camera tilt is good for if you need to simulate that sort of effect. But it only goes up to 24 and this is about as far as it will tilt for you. At zero, of course, you're looking at it straight on. Now, you don't have to stick with the basic tree colors that it's given you. You can use custom colors for the leaves. Click on that uh, color thumbnail there and Pick any type of color that you want for your tree. You can go from, you know, an alien-like blue or purple, anything strange, or you can go with a nice orange color if you want to get an autumn sort of look to your tree. And you could also choose a custom color for your branches and the trunk. And you could stick with its basic color, make a little slight change, or go with something a bit more extreme if you wanted to go with a, an alien-esque light blue. Anything that you want, you can change the colors of those two specific areas. And next down here is the flat shading for leaves. If you check that little box, you'll find that it gets rid of a lot of the detail between the leaves, and it gives you a much simpler, broader um, shading effect. You'll see that a lot of the tiny little details are gone now. Now you can also enhance the contrast of the leaves by this button here. And you can use flat shading for the branches and that will give you a singular color to be played with if that is to your liking. Now at the very bottom here, the leaves rotation lock. Once you click that, on the thumbnail you may not notice too much of a difference, but basically the leaves that Photoshop has calculated onto this tree have a variety of angles that they're seen from. And they will be squished and played with so it appears as though some of them have been twisted in the wind and they're not all looking straight at you, the full leaf view. But when you lock the leaf rotation, they're all going to look the same. So I'm going to remove that and let's go back to the absolute basics here. But once you have everything created the way you want your tree to be, just click the OK button, and your tree will be rendered into your image. Depending on the size of your image, or rather the size of the selection in your image, will determine how big the tree is. Now because I've made no selection onto the screen, it's generating itself as large as it possibly can. If I were to, let's say, turn off that layer here, we're going to create a new layer and grab the rectangular marquee tool. I'm just going to get a small box 
near the center of the image. And now we're going to render again. And just leave everything the same and click OK. And now the tree is rendered to fit within the small box that I've created for it. So this, uh, this enables you to create them anywhere you need them to be and at any size you need them to be. But for now, I'm going to delete that layer and go back to layer one so I can show you around the tree a little bit. Now, as we zoom in a little bit closer, let me zoom out just one more. You'll see that it is very complex and very well thought out method to creating the leaves on this tree. Now, it lacks a little extra detail for something that would be a bit more photorealistic. If you wanted to see some of the veins in the leaves, you're not going to find that here. Those are things you might have to add in yourself if you have the patience or the textures to do it with. But if you wanted to add this to a, a painted image, it works a lot better for that. And down below at the trunk, you'll notice that this applies to the trunk and the branches that this doesn't exactly look real. And this is something you'll have to work around, which I will get into part two of this tutorial. But for the limitations, it's still a really good tool to use to add in some simple, quick trees to anything you might need them in. And with the variety of trees that you can do, there are quite a lot of options you have for yourself here. Let me give you one more brief look here. Now, under your base tree type, you've got all of these trees, all of these different, different types of trees for you, oak trees and redwoods, through your pines, everything, 34 different types of trees to play with. Once you have your tree picked, as I showed you before, you can choose the direction of light, you can choose the type of leaves you put on it, the color of the leaves. You can make a tree look much more realistic towards what it should be. For those who really know about the science of trees, I don't. So I go with a lot of the basics. Or if I wanted to play around with making a tree that is something you would find on an alien planet, this is perfect for that. And if you click on the reset button, this will bring you back to the last form that you had applied to your image. So this brings me back to my default oak tree. But I don't need that. And there you have the basics of how to use the tree fill tool. If you want to continue on to part two and learn a little bit more about how to take a tree and add it into your background image, just click on the link off to the side there. And I will show you how to add some realism to these trees that you'll add into your image to get around the shortcomings that I've discussed already.